Hello friends, welcome back to Aurab Associates. Today I will show you how we can design shear wall with boundary element and spandrel. Here you can see that I have already analyzed the structure. Now we will go for the design procedure. At first go to select, then go to select, object type, select walls, click on select, click on close. Here you can see that it has also selected waste slab which we have to deselect. So go to select, then go to deselect, from here go to properties, then go to slab section. From here, select waste 9, which is the property of waste slab. Now click on deselect. Click on close. Now come back to this window and right click of mouse. Then select show selected objects only. Okay. Now again go to select, go to select object type select walls click on select close now go to design share wall design go to view slash revise preference here i am using design code aci 31814 rebar material 60 grade rebar shear shear material also 60 grade click on ok go to design share wall design assign pr section go to uniform reinforcing here i will use material concrete 3.5 ksi stone chips distributed bar here i am using number six spacing here you can use also 150 but i will use 175 mm spacing between the distributed bar and i will check either there is any overstress in the shear wall okay if there is any overstress, I will uh, decrease the spacing. Okay, initially we will uh, try with the greater spacing. Okay, here you can change, uh, change the clear cover of the river, but I am just using 25 mm, that's okay for me. Now, uh, from here, end slash corner bars. Here I am using bar size 8. Here you have to select reinforcement to be checked. Now click on OK. Now go to design, share wall design, go to select design combination, here I am using this 18 combination for share wall design, click on OK. Now go to design, share wall design, start design check. Here you can see that it apps just completed the design procedure of the shear wall and this is showing us the data for pure longitudinal reinforcing areas in mm square we can choose any of the shear wall for our detailing purpose here i am just uh, choosing this one okay but before starting the detailing procedure we have to check either there is any overstress issue or not so go to design go to shear wall design go to display design info from the drop down menu we have to select identify all failures click on apply and here you can see that there is no overstress warning or issues from here we can also check uh, demand capacity ratio okay then we can also check uh, shear reinforcing etc okay but at first we will go for the pier longitudinal reinforcing which is the main reinforcement or vertical reinforcement of the shear wall okay uh, just cut this one at first we can select this one okay then right click of mouse it apps will show us the design sheet from here you can see that the thickness of this wall is 304.8 mm and the length is 2033 mm that means this is a 12 inch shear wall now we will go to the excel here we will assign or provide the thickness of shear wall as 304.8 mm the length was 2033 mm so in meter this will be 2.033 height this is a, a 10 feet height shear wall so we will provide here 3.048 meter 
now we will uh, design um, main slash vertical reinforcement so at first we have to provide data for required vertical reinforcement from etabs from etabs we can see that the necessary longitudinal reinforcing is 8852 mm square which we have to input in excel 8852 here from the drop down menu we can uh, choose the uh, the uh, dia of river here i am just uh, choosing 20 mm river as a result calculated required spacing is coming 144.20 mm that means 14.10 uh, knots uh, river at each side if we uh, use a spacing as 144.205 but uh, you can't use uh, fraction number of river you have to assign a even number okay uh, even number for both side basically but for uh, each side we can use here 15 number of river that means total 30 number of river but if we suggest uh, less spacing than the required by considering the practical situation because it will be tough to assign uh, river at 144 mm distance uh, so we will assign uh, we can suggest here 125 mm spacing okay as a result we have to provide total 32 knots of river but uh, this is also um, a case that we can use a fraction number of river in that case we can assign 34 number of rivers okay that means uh, 17 river at each side that means uh, for this side for this side we have to assign total uh, 17 number of river of 20 mm dia and for this side also we have to assign or uh, provide um, 17 number of rivers of 20 mm dia okay now we have to check the minimum uh, reinforcement ratio minimum reinforcement ratio or required reinforcement ratio as per the code is 0 0.0025 okay provided reinforcement ratio that means if we assign uh, 20 mm river dia as a sp at a spacing of uh, 125 mm in that case we are providing reinforcement ratio 0 0.016 which is greater than 0 0.0025 as a result this is showing that um, selected river dia and spacing is okay now we will check the spacing uh, with the uh, code which is 3 into thickness coming here 914.914.4 mm then wall length divided by 3 which is coming 677.66 uh, mm then uh, last one is 18 inches okay from these three and uh, this one that means from these four data the minimum value is 125 mm okay as a result this uh, panel is uh, selecting this data which is 125 mm that means we will uh, use 20 mm uh, river dia at a spacing of 125 mm for each side okay now we will go for a shear slash horizontal reinforcement calculation here we have to provide data for required shear reinforcement from etabs so go to etabs then go to design shear wall design then go to display design info from here we can see the peer shear reinforcing okay here you can see that for this panel required shear reinforcing is uh, 762 but this is for mm square per meter we can select this one and right click of mouse and also from here we can see that this is required river uh, area is 762 mm square per meter so we will go to the excel again and we will use here or provide data of uh, 762 mm square per meter now we have to select river from the drop down menu here you can select the river dia here i am just using 10 mm river as a result calculated uh, required spacing is 206 for each side that means for this side you have to um, use 10 mm river at a spacing of 206 mm and for that side also that means for th this side also but this is not practical to use uh, 206 mm uh, spacing so here i am i can select 150 or also we can select 200 mm okay 
as a result finally provided bar for both side is 30 knots that's fine this is coming from this calculation uh, as, uh, here for the shear reinforcement also minimum required reinforcement ratio as per code is 0 0.0025 here we have provided uh, 0 0.00277 as a result this is showing as a value of ok so as this is very uh, near to this value that is a point double zero two five so here i am i can use 175 also this is also fine if we use 200 mm but we will go for a safer uh, design so here i am just selecting 175 mm as a result provided reinforcement ratio is 0 0.0029 as a result here uh, this portion is showing okay now check the spacing with the code minimum uh, spacing check uh, first one is 3 into thickness 904 uh, point sorry 914.4 mm then wall length divided by 5 then 18 inches from these four value these three and this one that means from these four value this uh, box is selecting the minimum result okay which is 175 mm so provided reinforcement is uh, 897.6 mm square per meter where required uh, shear reinforcement value was 762 we are using or we are providing 897.6 mm square per meter which is okay that means if this value if this value is greater than this one or equal to this one this box will show you a uh, okay otherwise if this is less than this value it will show you redesign okay suppose suppose here if we use 207 in that case this is showing redesign because this value is less than 762 mm square per meter okay okay fine now as a result we can see that uh, 20 mm rebar at 125 mm center to center for both side which is the vertical reinforcement and 10 mm dia rebar at 175 mm center to center distance as shear wall reinforcement okay fine we have completed uh, main reinforcement or vertical reinforcement calculation and also shear slash horizontal reinforcement calculation now we will complete boundary element design for this shear wall at first go to excel here you can see that a special boundary element should be provided where the maximum extreme fiber compressive stress due to factored forces including earthquake effect exceeds 0.2 f prime c that means if the calculated compressive stress exceeds 0.2 f prime c in that case we have to assign boundary element in between a shear wall go to etabs select this shear wall and right click of mouse Here you can see that we are using 24.13 MPa concrete that means 3.5 KSI. So our stress limit will be 0 0.2 into 24.13 MPa which is 4.83 MPa. But calculated, calculated uh, compressive stress is 6.36 MPa for top left for top right the value is 5.71 bottom left the value of calculated compressive stress is 7.97 bottom right 7.06 mpa all the values are greater than our stress limit 4.83 so we have to assign boundary element okay go to excel here at first we have to assign strength of concrete which is 3.5 ksi here we are using 60 grade steel that means the strength of river will be uh, 60 ksi now uh, here you can see that there have two procedure of assigning boundary element in the first procedure you can see that the thickness or the width of the boundary element is greater than the wave thickness in the second procedure you can see that the width or thickness of the boundary element is same as the wave thickness you can use this excel sheet for both the procedure here 
we have used this formula for calculating Ig that was dh cube by 12f plus ad square. This uh, Ig formula is for the boundary element. So for two boundary element, we have multiplied this value with two. And this one is for the weight that was dh cube by 12. And if you are interested uh, to uh, follow the second procedure, that means the thickness of boundary element is same as the web. In that case, this will use dh cube by 12 for the whole shear wall. Now, come back to the Excel. Here you can see that we have to provide data for the uh, maximum axial load from ETAPS. That means PU value, which is Here we can see that the maximum PU value is 3739.53. So in Excel, just provide 3739.53. Maximum value of moment, which is uh, 336 kN per meter. Uh, this is the default value. We have to check with ETAPS and the value is 968.0072. Okay. 968.0072 okay now length of shear wall you don't need to uh, provide again this will take data from the previous sheet thickness of shear wall this will take data from the previous sheet height of shear wall this will take data from the previous sheet now we have to provide length of boundary element so go back to e tabs here you can see that the edge length or boundary element length maximum length is uh, 658.4 mm so here 658.4 mm here we are using uh, concrete cover 25 mm you can change this one as per your choice that means uh, you can use 35 mm or 40 mm now width of boundary element here we are following the second procedure so we will provide boundary element thickness 304.8 mm and also the width of uh, web 304.8. Suppose we are interested to follow the first one, that means first procedure, that which is uh, the thickness of the boundary element is greater than the web. Suppose here we are using 304 mm. So the calculated IG is this one. But if you are following second procedure, that means 304.8, the calculated IG value is this one. Okay. Now the length of web, this is being calculated by the Excel, modulus of elasticity of the river, not very necessary, then uh, moment of inertia, okay fine, gross area, then uh, section, uh, section modulus, here we are using the formula for the section modulus is uh, Z equal to IG divided by LG by 2, okay. So the calculated value is this one, as a result calculated compressive stress sigma max equal to uh, 10.83 okay 10.83 and the sigma minimum value is uh, 1.24 okay and the co uh, maximum compressive stress uh, by ETFs is uh, 9.76 not here we have to assign this value okay here the maximum value is 7.97 7.97 here you can see here you can okay at first let me provide this one or we'll put this one 97.97 here a question may arise in your mind that uh, our calculated maxim, uh, maximum value of stress is not matching with interest because here we are using the maximum value of pu and the maximum value of mu if we need to check this one with theta suppose here uh, we if we need to calculate this one that means here maximum pu value is 3846 okay 3846 3846 and for this case the mu value and for this for this case the mu value is 369 okay 369 so here you can see that the maximum calculated compressive distress value is 8 or which is similar to 7.97 uh, but here we are just using the maximum value of PU and the maximum value of MU. Okay. So maximum value. Okay. Now uh, from here we will finally select a compressive stress. Here we are 
uh, just using the maximum one this is not a very important issue at all because here uh, if this is 7.97 in that case this will also exceed the value of 4.83 if this is 10.83 in that case also this will exceed the maximum uh, limit of 4.83 so we need boundary element or not yes because here g4 that means here this value is greater than this value okay now provided reinforcement ratio this is coming uh, from this sheet here you can see that uh, the here we have provided reinforcement ratio 0 0.016 which is coming from the previous sheet alpha here from uh, Nielsen 15th edition page 87 you can see that alpha value is 0 0.724 f prime c less than 4000 psi 4000 psi so here we have used uh, the value of alpha 0 0.72 if you are using uh, concrete strength greater than 4000 psi in that case you have to add um, 0 0.04 for every 1000 psi so uh, this excel sheet calculated uh, neutral axis distance here we have used this formula for neutral axis which is rho fyd divided by alpha f prime c now required length of boundary element here as per our manual calculation this is the formula basically here the formula for boundary element calculation is c minus 0.1 lw or c by 2 whichever is greater here we have calculated that required boundary element length is uh, 585 mm and for the second condition that means for c by 2 the required boundary element length is 394 mm but the maximum uh, value of the boundary element calculated by etabs is uh, 3 sorry 658.4 so this uh, this box is selecting the maximum value between g9 that means from this value and between these two values okay so this is uh, selecting the maximum value which is 658.4 mm okay fine now uh, here vertical reinforcement calculation for the boundary element here we have considered that uh, this uh, if this is the pu value this is being divided into two part for these two boundary element okay so this is being so this is uh, dividing the maximum pu value into two portion that is g4 divided by 2 here this is the g4 value and this is being divided by 2 now calculated lever arm value is 1374.6 mm uh, then calculated each side load from the moment and you divided by l prime is this one resultant load on boundary element here uh, positive for compression compressive zone or compression zone and negative for the tension zone okay so here uh, maximum value is 2573.97 kilonewton for the comp uh, compression zone and for the tension zone the value will be deducted from the g40 okay now here selected maximum pu value is uh, 2573.98 kilonewton then gross area of each boundary element is being calculated by the excel now strength reduction factor here this is from the nelson uh, 15th edition 293 page number alpha value will be 0 0.65 for the um, rectangular shape column then uh, for uh, spiral you have to use 0 0.75 okay now here we are uh, designing the, this uh, boundary element for rectangular shape so we are using 0 0.65 then alpha value will be uh, 0.8 fine here you can see the alpha value recommended value is 0 0.8 so uh, calculated ast is coming this one as a result uh, rho value is coming 1.0 rho means uh, here the reinforcement ratio but we have to assign minimum ast value this one that means one percent here we are designing this boundary element basically as column then this is the procedure uh, guided by the code okay so our uh, row value is greater than row minimum so this is selected the, this is selecting the maximum row value from these two here you can see the max between g50 and uh, g52 but if our calculated value is less than the uh, row minimum in that case this uh, this box will select the row minimum here i have uh, used a formula for 
uh, this condition now here our calculated row value is uh, greater than 1 percent so this uh, box uh, selected 2120 mm square now we can choose a river dia from the drop down menu if we select uh, 20 mm dia in that case we have to use total uh, 6 nos uh, river in the where in the boundary element but if we select uh, 16 mm in that case we have to uh, use um, 10.54 uh, this is not possible to use the fractional value so we can uh, go for we can go for 20 mm dia that means 7 or 8 here we can see that we are using 8 nos of 20 mm river for the boundary element that means for each boundary element basically okay so if we are interested to use total 8 nos that means uh, place river along length of boundary element let me show you here i am just selecting four nos as a result spacing between the river is 152 which is okay okay then here we have set uh, two condition that means yeah, if you need okay here this value have to be greater than from this two value okay so for, uh, along the length of the boundary element we are placing uh, four number of 20 mm river and for the for the we uh, for uh, river along width of the boundary element we are placing two nos of river that means if we go to the cat here we are using four number four Okay. Here we are using 4 number of 20 mm river along the length of the boundary element and 2 number of 20 uh, mm river along the width of the boundary element. That's fine. So the calculated spacing will be 152 mm for along the length and 127 mm along the width. And for both cases we are getting okay here because this is satisfying the condition. Now we will go for shear reinforcement design for the boundary element so just select the shear wall then right click of mouse here we can see that for shear design ultimate shear force is 472.86 go to excel here maximum moment will come from the previous sheet we just have to input the value of shear force here all other values from 5 to 13 will come from the previous sheet but here we have to check the vertical length of the boundary wall according to the code the special boundary reinforcement should extend vertically from a critical section a distance lw or mu divided by 4 vu here lw is the length of wall in the direction of shear wall and we already know the value of mu and vu so if we consider the lw we get this one that means 2.033 meter and if we calculate mu divided by 4 vu we are getting this value that means 0 0.511 meter but here we are assigning this boundary element up to the whole height of the shear wall okay that means for uh, 3.048 meter okay so this is showing okay here now we have to design shear reinforcement which is perpendicular to lb uh, what is LB here? Here LB is length of boundary element and we are designing a shear reinforcement perpendicular to LB. That means if this one is LB, we are designing, now we are designing this shear reinforcement. Okay. We are designing this shear reinforcement or we can check this from the cat. Here this one can be just a hook or can be a uh, full, full uh, stirrup or tie, whatever. Here this can be just a single hook okay or this can be a whole tie like this okay just we have to check either this is sufficient with a single hook or we need um, full tie okay so initially here we are taking or considering just two leg here we are just considering two leg of the 
uh, share reinforcement that means here initially we are just considering that here we have just this part okay we draw uh, don't want to as initially we don't need to assign any uh, hook at the middle okay or any tie bar at the middle so if we do so in that case uh, we are getting a spacing between the share bar is uh, 6 25 mm okay then a spacing check according to the code which is 0 0.25 into smallest member dimension we are getting here 76.2 mm then 6 into diameter of longitudinal bar we are getting 120 mm then we are getting here uh, 4 plus uh, 14 minus hx divided by 3 we are getting 11.8 mm that means selected allowable spacing is 11.8 mm this is very small so we have to increase the number of leg okay as a result we are getting that uh, maximum allowable spacing 72.6 sorry 76.2 mm that means we have to assign a three leg we have to assign three leg shear reinforcement here we are getting confinement with 625 uh, what is uh, how this is coming this is coming by deducting the clear cover from the length of boundary element okay and then here required shared reinforcement select hoop or cross tie whatever you want here for our case only a single cross tie will be enough how we can say that here if we select 10 mm river okay if we select 10 mm river and if we provide three nose that means three leg we are we can we are being able to cover uh, the required shear reinforcement the formula for required shear reinforcement here is a h equal to sorry a h equal to 0 0.09 s into h c into f prime c divided by f y okay so by using this formula we are getting that our required shear reinforcement area is uh, 250 mm square so if we provide uh, three leg uh, shear reinforcement this will be enough okay uh, sorry this uh, this is not being enough actually this is not being enough so we have to provide four leg okay so here uh, we can say this one okay so assign here four leg okay fine this one is okay and now this is also okay here okay basically by using this data we are uh, we are uh, calculating the maximum selected spacing that means s okay that means s here and by using this s or spacing value we are calculating ash that means required area of shear reinforcement okay so after uh, after taking the decision about uh, the area of shear reinforcement we are taking decision about the number of leg or number of hoop that means here we have to assign uh, four leg four leg shear reinforcement with 10 mm dia if we increase the dia in that case we may can use uh, three leg shear wall okay sorry three leg shear reinforcement now here i am just using 10 mm dia so here i have to use four number of leg that means that means here we have to assign shear reinforcement by this way okay now we will design shear reinforcement parallel to lb okay that means for this direction that means for this direction for this direction we may have to use a cross tie here or a full tie bar so let's check here confinement parallel to lb at first we are assuming that uh, number of leg is 2 as a result we are getting uh, the value of hy is 254.8 uh, maximum spacing we are getting here this one okay from here we are getting the uh, selected allowable spacing 76.2 mm by using this 76.2 mm as i said earlier we are calculating the value of required ash2 or required shear reinforcement so if we use 10 mm dia and if we use uh, two leg of shear wall this is um, this is uh, satisfying the required shear reinforcement area so we don't need to use any uh, cross tie or hoop here okay in this portion there is no necessity of any cross tie or 
share reinforcement okay but for this direction we need this hoop okay or tie bar so by this way we have completed uh, the detailing of shared reinforcement for the boundary element now we will go for a spandrel design so go to design share wall design go to display design info from here select a spandrel longitudinal reinforcement click on apply here you can see the uh, longitudinal reinforcement for a spandrel at top and at bottom here we are selecting uh, this spandrel for the detailing purpose so from here we can see that at top the maximum uh, reinforcement area is 451 and at bottom maximum reinforcement area is 276 basically what we are designing initially initially if we go here that means in google here at first we are designing this top bar this top bars of the beam and bottom bars of the spandrel beam okay so at first we will design this top bars and bottom bars of the spandrel now uh, go to excel here we just have to input the required river area for top which is 451 in our case 451 mm square so if we select uh, river dia that means 20 mm river dia we are getting the required number of bar at top is 1.43 nos but we can't use a fractional number of bar in that case we can use two number of bar, uh, 20 mm uh, dia bar at top or if we decrease the dia of river we will get 2.24 nos then we can use three number of 16 mm river here i will go with uh, 20 mm river that means we will use here two nos now uh, here for bottom required river area from the e tabs is 276 this is very smaller value so the, if we put this one here we will get a 16 mm river uh, and we required number of bar at bottom is uh, 1.37 nodes but we can can't do so so we have to provide two number of bar here now we will go for a spandrel shear and skin reinforcement here what is shear reinforcement and what is skin reinforcement if we go to google here you can see these vertical bars or stirrups are shear reinforcement and these horizontal bars these horizontal bars throughout the depth of the spandrel is known as skin reinforcement so at first we have to uh, input the thickness of the spandrel which is uh, 300 mm here then clear cover we are considering 25 mm height of the spandrel we can take this data from the it depths here you can see that the depth of this spandrel is 762 mm so we will input 762 now a required vertical river from it depths which is okay select the spandrel then right click of mouse from here a spandrel shear design we can see that for um, vertical reinforcement required area is 762 mm square per meter and for horizontal a required river area is same that means 762 mm square per meter so go back to the excel here we are using 762 sorry here we are using 762 mm square per meter now if we choose vertical river dia uh, 10 mm we will get uh, sorry and if we choose a uh, two leg two leg tie bar in that case we are uh, getting required spacing so, uh, 206.14 mm but we have to check this one with code which is d divided by 5 and we are getting uh, 143 mm 6 inch that means uh, 150 mm or 6 db that means 6 into dia of the bar that means 60 mm so from these three and here also we have one sorry sorry from this four value the minimum um, value is 60 mm so this box is selecting the minimum value between this uh, four so we can finally we can provide a spacing 50 mm or we can provide 60 mm also in that case this will show okay here but if we somehow choose 65 mm this will show not okay here so we have to um, provide a data which is equal to or uh, less than this selected spacing so here we are just using uh, 50 mm or 60 mm okay now horizontal river area required river area we 
have seen that 70, uh, 762 mm square per meter. Okay. So here I can use per meter actually. So if we choose horizontal river, what are the horizon? These bars are the horizontal river. Or if you go to Google, this bar along the depth of the spandrel is known as is known as skin reinforcement. Okay. So if we choose a 12 mm river, we are getting required spacing between the bars as uh, 296. Okay. Then we we are uh, checking this one with the code which is we are getting where we are getting uh, 200 mm. So as a result from these two values from these two values uh, selected spacing is 200 mm so we can use a 200 mm but somehow if we use 225 mm here this will not be okay this will be not okay so here we are using 200 mm that means the spacing between the vertical river note carefully the spacing this between this vertical river will be maximum 200 mm now we will go for diagonal reinforcement design for the coupling beam that means we will design these two diagonal beam from here you can understand this more clearly okay at first here we have to input the required river area from etabs so go to etabs here we are working uh, with this beam so select the beam and then right click of mouse from here we can see that diagonal reinforcement uh, maximum river area here is 476 so we will select this one so input here 476 mm square now if we select river dia 16 mm we get that required number of bar uh, 2.36 but here we can't uh, provide odd number of bar or fractional number of bar also because here we have to provide at least two bar at top and at least two bar at bottom okay at least two bar at top and at least two bar at bottom so we have to provide minimum four number of 16 mm dia river as diagonal reinforcement then come to uh, transver transverse reinforcement design for this uh, diagonal beam or you can see uh, say the shear reinforcement design for the diagonal beam here we are now designing this beam this uh, reinforcements okay so here we are selecting type at dia 10 mm confined width of the coupling beam here coming 177.5 mm now confined height if two layer reinforcement is used then bc equal 8c is enough but if you are uh, if you have to use three layer of river suppose if the reinforcement area from etabs here is 1000 mm suppose okay in that case we have to assign minimum we can't use five here we have to use minimum six number of bar that means um, we have to assign diagonal reinforcement in three layer okay that means here the case will be this is our case this is our case but uh, if uh, there was uh, more reinforcement in that case we have to assign diagonal reinforcement in three layer so the confined uh, height will be increased that means 177 plus 177 okay so here uh, 177 is enough for our case uh, spacing we are checking with code that means thickness divided by 4 6 into diameter of diagonal uh, reinforcement then uh, 6 inches from here minimum uh, value is 75 mm so this box is selected 75 mm so provided spacing here we have provided 75 mm now gross area of the coupling beam by considering one inch clear cover we are getting uh, here you can see the diagonal beam basically here you can say the diagonal beam the uh, gross area of the diagonal beam is this one then uh, confined area of the diagonal beam coming this one then required area of shear river for vertical side that means for this side here this is this direction is hc and this direction is bc initially we are uh, calculating for hc direction and we are getting for hc direction ash equal to 91.57 mm square by using this formula and 69.89 mm square by using this formula now governing river area is 91.57 mm square so if we use a two leg 10 mm dia river as transverse or shear reinforcement uh, 
this will be enough that means this is covering 157.07 mm square which is greater than 91 mm square that means as a result this is okay now uh, we will go for required uh, area of shear river for horizontal side that means uh, for bc that means for bc here asa is coming 91.57 by using this formula and 69.89 by using this formula so here also governing river area is 91.57 mm square so if we provide 2 lake 10 mm dia river then this is um, this is um, covering the required river area okay here we are providing 157.08 and our required area is 91.57 mm square that means here it is okay if this was less than the required river area this will tell us to increase the river dia or lake okay that means for uh, this shear reinforcement we can use uh, 10 mm dia 10 mm dia uh, river with two lake okay so by this way we have completed uh, total detailing of uh, shear wall with boundary element and spandrel that's all for today see you in the next tutorial thank you